um, kind of transitioning on to another thing that makes you guys unique. It's the advisory board that you guys have. And before we did or before I hopped on this call for the interview, um, I looked at your guys' website. So it said as of September 12th, the advisory board yeah. was Galen Robinson for basketball, Zeke Reiser for football, and Brad Towns for baseball. Can you talk before we get into anything else, just in terms of how those three came about to, to get involved with HOUNIL? Um, and I'll follow up after that too. Okay. So Brad and I have been friends for 20 years. We met on a football trip to Michigan in 2003. He got us thrown out of a bar, um, <laughs> and I thought I hated the guy, and then we've become really close friends ever since. Uh, Zeke Reiser has written for GoCooks.com. We have numerous uh, former players that have written for us, Zeke Reiser, Matt Hogan, Dane Roy. I really like special teams, uh, <laughs> and, and several others, um, and Zeke. We wanted a football guy, uh, an in the trenches kind of guy, uh, to work with us. And Zeke has a great mind, and we're really looking forward to him. And then Galen is almost larger than life. What he meant to that basketball program, I mean, they call him, the players call him their mentor. They call him the godfather, the yeah. current players. And he has a legitimacy with these guys that even though they see me every week in practice and interviews and whatever, I don't have that. And Galen brings that component to what we're doing. And he's also been fantastic interviewing people. Um, we hopefully will be able to do some things with his uh, apparel company down the road, but these guys are all, and it's an advisory board. They're not being paid. They're not making a ton of money off of it. They're not making any money off of it. Um, and so it's just, we're looking to find two more. I'm looking at uh, Akeem Olajuwon and, mm. you know, Case Keenum, but I don't think those two are going to happen. So um, <laughs> we want to find two more athletes. We want to find female athletes. We want to find recent athletes. We might even go with a, a current athlete um, just because we want to understand what it is that we need to do, what it is the needs are for the players. Um, we've heard stories, bad stories, of athletes that their parents haven't been able to go see them in the Sweet 16, the Elite Eight, the Final Four. They, they couldn't afford it. And this, this NIL can be a way for those families to go see their kids play. And can you imagine missing your kid in the final four because you just couldn't mm -hmm. afford a flight, a bus trip, a hotel, a whatever. And we're gonna make sure in the future that if those situations arise, we're gonna do content. We're gonna make it work to where someone can, can get their families to the games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, that's well. That's awesome. First of all, like you said, to being able to give those families an opportunity, like I couldn't imagine being able to to miss out on a family member playing on such a high caliber event um, for for financial reasons. It's yeah. it's terrible. So that's awesome to hear that. But then also what you touched on when it comes to having, you know, the the people that you do have invo involved in the advisory board, like you mentioned uh, specifically with Galen Robinson, how it adds that kind of extra layer of legitimacy, which which again it's crucial especially um like you said how often you guys are working with athletes and it's not just a one-time one-off you guys are working for a long period of time so that's awesome yeah. to hear too i'm curious just kind of you mentioned whenever the idea first um got mentored was was on the come up you talked about how uh, people within the university were supportive how big was that to be able to have that support from people within the university as well um it's huge and they have put us in connection with others that can help us. Obviously, NIL rules and state law prohibits anybody at the school from helping athletes in this way. They can mm -hmm. steer them towards an opportunity, but they can't, they can't be involved. Right. And so I have made sure that we, we don't step over that line at any point. But everybody has been very supportive, um, people that – I didn't know if they would be, have been supportive. And obviously the athletes are all in. 
Gotcha. And then just kind of transitioning you know, over uh, once again, and this is um, something you mentioned at the beginning of our interview, uh, just in terms of obviously there's you guys are HOU and NIL, but there's other different forms of NIL entities mm-hmm. out there. You you mentioned Hoop and, Ho- Hoop and Holler, who they the way they dubbed themselves as the semi-collective for Houston yeah. Cougars and then linking Cougs as well. And and what I mentioned in one of our previous previous segments, just in terms of it, it seems like each one of you guys do different things in particular, like with you guys, you guys do the the content with the athletes, direct stuff that you're not going to find anywhere else. The hoop and holler, they much more focus on, I mean, they're the entity behind the star pizza commercials that especially the sack have ones, they got all the traction and then linking coups. They're the ones that are providing the athletes with kind of those deals with companies that, that want to be able to work with athletes in and of itself. How, Maybe big's not the right way, right way to phrase it, but how how is it to be able to have those different entities and and they're all focused on different things? Because at the end of the day, you guys are all focusing on name, Im- image, and likeness at the University of Houston, which is crucial, especially as Houston transition over transitions over to the Big Twelve. Yeah, uh, some people have believed or said that there's a competition between. The three, uh, Mike Pittman and, and Hoop and Holler and Star Pizza, fantastic. We're definitely not in co- competition with them. I don't do pizza. Uh, <laughs> but it's just not. And and I don't know Landon or Austin from Lincoln Cougs. Uh, but from what I've been told, they're doing a great job. I, we're not competing with each other. It's not a competition. It's not us versus them. Everything has to work. No one is going to be able to raise enough to put us on the same level, put the University of Houston on the same level as other schools. It's just that that NIL group doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And it really doesn't exist at any other school either. You're seeing athletes do events and sponsorships and things with different groups um, and it just stacks upon each other. And hopefully at the end of the day, the athletes are taken care of and their needs are met. One of the weird things that I didn't know is that scholarships no longer cover parking. Really? Wow. Yeah, right? And so <laughs> players have to take that out of their um, cost of attendance or just out of their own pockets. I mean, that's goofy. So we're working to try to find ways to deal with that. Landon and Austin and Linking Cougs, they're finding big sponsorships um, in sort of different ways. And I fully support that. And I hope every guy gets every sponsorship that's available. In our content, we're actually starting to ask players, you know, what are your other deals? What are you interested in doing? Like, where could you see yourself working with? What kind of company? And hopefully that spurs somebody to get them in connection with someone that can provide them with that kind of sponsorship, that kind of offer, that kind of opportunity. 